He told me to have fun, so let's have fun. Ah, all hail King Jesus. Amen. Wow, a lot of y'all came back. I'm surprised. When I came against Botox, I thought I'd be done. <laughs> By the way, I, I, guys, I, I want to let you know something. I'm just a little bit sarcastic. You know, Jesus has a sense of humor. I hope that you guys can understand, you know. Um, it's okay. So forgive me, please, if you were offended. Because who knows, when we get old, man, I might pop some in too. So, you know, get a wrinkle or something, I'll fix it, you know. Ah, give me a second. Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> Lord, we love you so much. I want to represent you well up here, Lord. And um, I just can't thank you enough for Eden, a place where the presence of God rests in Seattle. Lord Jesus, also, I saw the name Newcastle. I think I'm somewhere close to Newcastle. So, Lord, I believe that's prophetic too. So, I just... Uh, <laughs> I just thank you that you're building a lot of new castles for the kingdom around here. Yeah. Lord Jesus, we love you. We really do. I can't thank you also enough for just Patricia King, Bobby Connor, Troy Brewer, Prophet Charlie, who actually opened the door for this opportunity. I, I really just thank you for their lives because they're plowing hard, and I, I get it because I do it too, so. Lord, just thank you for their lives. Thank you for the saints that are here, the saints that may not be on this platform here, but they're actually doing things behind the scenes that social media don't know about, but the kingdom does. So, Lord, we just appreciate those two. Lord, it's not ours to live. It's yours. It's your life. It's not I who live, but Christ in me. We live for you. So, Lord Jesus, I just want you to get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And the saints in the church say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You know, it's funny when you get up here, like, I, I feel so, like, humble and nice when I'm sitting in the chair and I'm like, yay. And then I get up here and it's like, ha, go, go, Power Rangers, you know. <laughs> Something happens, right? I didn't even know you, man, you sing so good. I was like, there's a joy, joy, joy. I was like, this man's, like, bubbling with joy, you know. Ah, y'all got a good pastor here, man. Y'all do. You know what I'm used to, right? I'm used to going around some pastors sometimes and they're like, man, you're here two or five more years. I'm out of this thing, man. You know, I'm like, man, you don't, you don't get to retire, man. Reinhard Bonnke said, I never retire, I refire. So if you sign up to do Christianity correctly, it's a full contact sport where you never stop. All right? So there is no retiring. All right? So just wanted to let you know that. Some people treat this thing like a job. This isn't a job. This is a lifestyle. 24-7. It never stops because you should never stop glorifying Jesus Christ. Amen? So, uh, by the way, I wanted to ask, uh, is there any unsaved people in the house? I'm starting early. Ah, are you being, is it that easy to ask if people are unsaved? You're not saved. Really, somebody dragged you here. Ah, y'all don't know Jesus the way we do. But you raised your hand. Ah. Have you ever seen a preacher just say, hey, where's the unsaved people? Do you want to be saved? You do? Come be saved. Come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. What's up, man? God bless you, bro. Nice to meet you. I saw two hands, though. Where is number two? Come on, number two. Uh, hey. So I'm a <laughs> Wow. Nice to meet you. I'm Daniel. Raven. And your name? Russell. Russell. Where are you from? Ukraine. Ah, Ukraine. <laughs> Come on. We love the Ukrainian people. Amen. Amen. Ukraine shall be saved through this man of God. Amen. Amen. 
Listen, why I ask such a very simple question, and usually, you know, you got to do all this preaching and set up, and, you know, I'm a little crazy, and I'm like, you want to be saved, you know? And you just come up here. It's that easy, guys. You go fishing, and something's going to bite, right? Amen. So my question, you, you've heard the gospel, though. This isn't your first time hearing it. No. Or experiencing it. No. You probably just went in a backslidden state, right? Yes. I understand. This is your first time, though. No. Okay, this is like your backslidden state in your back. Uh, I, I uh, salute you guys for wanting to <laughs> slide right back into Jesus. Amen. <laughs> just give me one second. Stand right here. Just hang tight. I want to teach you guys something. You know, we talk about, you know, God is married to the back backslider. He never stops coming after us, even if we run from him. So when people backslide, if you can think about it, you go backwards, right? You go down this slide, and all of a sudden, you just slide back to where you were. It's like a you. I always noticed it. You know, in, in my life, actually, as a Christian, after I ministered, I actually slid back too. But after I tried to run, it was like I couldn't get away. Preachers hated me. Christians hated me, but he didn't. He literally came and chased me down. He left the 99 for the one. I was a heathen as a Christian. Ain't that crazy? Out there sleeping around, doing crazy stuff. Broke my own marriage. Ain't that wild? <laughs> Some people don't like that, but I don't care. Listen, but now my wife now and my ex-wife went on a field trip together, so I don't understand it all. It's a Jesus thing. <laughs> and my daughter's in the middle like, yay! Hey, stepmom and mom. It's only Jesus that can do that, you know? Amen. <laughs> he knows how to work all things together for the good of those who love him. Let me tell you something. I don't care what you did, what you went through. I don't care how far you backslid. You didn't backslide too far because you're still here. You know, things can be said sometimes from people that hurt us, reject us, and pull us out. Things can happen in our life that, you know, really affect our being. People misrepresent Christ sometimes. We see people supposed to be a certain way and they're not a certain way. Or somebody will come and tell a lie in our ear. We'll believe the lie. And the next thing you know, like this person lied to me and now I'm over here and I'm condemned and I'm all messed up. But I never wanted to be over here. But I, you dragged me over here. Now I got to go to church and backslide back into Jesus' heart. Right? Sound like a true story? Mm, I thought so. Listen, I know because I've been there. My man, ah, Jesus is meeting you now. He loves you, my friend, tremendously. Today, you guys don't have to say no more. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Jesus is having mercy on you. He is restoring your heart. He's making all things new <laughs> in Jesus' name. I hear this. The Lord wants me to say these simple words to you, my precious one. My precious one. You need to know that you're precious in the sight of the Lord. You're pure. He doesn't make unpure things. He makes pure things. What was unpure, he makes pure again. What was violated, he brings back into exaltation. Today, you are being exalted in front of man. You understand you? Jesus is having mercy on your backslidden state. And today, you've said yes to come back home. And he's inviting you back with open arms. Actually, he never took his arms out from around you. They've always been there. Amen. Is that okay? You're saved, right? I guess. Do you love Jesus? Yes. He, he loved you first. Don't forget that. So it's really just, I love you, Jesus. Can you say, I love you, Jesus? I love you, Jesus. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. You, you really are. I mean, it's like a big deal. You know? You're saved. See, we think our mistakes can pull us out of God's grace. You think you're that dirty? You don't think his blood can't clean you up in an instance? Actually, his blood never stopped. It's still pouring. You think he didn't know you'd make the mistakes or you'd end up in places you shouldn't be or you'd end up in relationships you probably shouldn't be in and things like that? He knew that. He knows how the devil works. The devil's stupid. See, the God is sitting back. You know, it's like this. My servant Job, you know? And what happened? The devil looked stupid because he went and attacked one of the righteous men, right? Are you a righteous one? I don't know. Say yes. Yes. I'm going to tell you why because Jesus give you his righteousness. You can't do anything. Ah. 
I have a feeling a religious spirit has been speaking to you and condemning you and making you not feel good enough. It's religion that's attacking you. It's condemnation. Condemnation will make sin come alive in our life. You get it? I want to let you know something. I'm hearing some things about you that you would be surprised that I knew, but I'm not going to put it out for everybody to hear because it would probably be surprising that I know. It's okay. I don't care how big the mistake is. I don't care what you've done. Hear this again. I don't care how messed up it was. Jesus will cover it now. You understand? Mm -hmm. Are you isolated right now? Um, Do you have church family around you? This will be my new church. Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. 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 Okay. Very simple. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to hold your hands out. I'm going to touch your head, and you're going to be released from the bondage of yesterday. Release her now. In the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit of unforgiveness towards herself that had came upon her, I command you to release her life. I command the grace, love, compassion, and mercy of Christ to come upon her. Now, release the problem that has bound you for so long. Don't allow this witchcraft spirit to be wrapped around your life any longer and to hold you down and make you have memories of the things that were done. I command every one of these memories to be removed from your life. I command all things to be made new. Now, you are pure, you are righteous, you are holy in the sight of God. Your sins are forgiven. Receive fresh life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's do better than that, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, uh... Church leaders, I think we got to follow up with our friend right here. Maybe give me a lady just to minister to her really fast. Just speak some sweet things into her ears that Jesus would say to her. Amen. She needs a lot of love. Amen. Ah. I tell you, that's the first time. I, anybody not saved? In <laughs> I didn't even preach nothing, you know. It's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. That means y'all got a good God in this house. Amen. (laughs) A lot of people think they have to say a lot of things. You don't have to. When you carry Jesus, people will be compelled. They will just come. They'll be like, ah, what is that smell? The good smell. And they'll run towards you, not away. Amen. So. That's why it's important we know the word, because the word will get into us, and it will get over everybody else. Now, look, I uh, get the honor and privilege, thanks to this amazing apostle of the house and his wife and this wonderful church, to end with a big bang. Amen. And I got a feeling it's going to get very messy in a lot of ways. In a good way. I really mean that. I believe the Lord is going to allow prophecy to come forth. Words of knowledge is to be released. I believe a lot of shifts and things are going to happen. I believe people will be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Amen. Keegan told me one of you asked, am I going to baptize people in the Holy Spirit and fire? I can't do it, but I have somebody with me who can. His name is Jesus. And he is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. We're living in a time where God has a big, big desire on his heart, and that is for the sons of God to manifest. That's huge for him right now. Would you be mad if, like, a Big Mac or something started to talk more than you about Jesus? If the burgers started to cry out, you know what I'm saying? The french fries started to say Jesus because you wouldn't. The rocks, you know? The Bible said the rocks will cry out. If you don't do it, creation will. You know why there's earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes? Not because of the devil. It's because the earth is saying, do something, church. We're tired of this. We have the doomsday prophets. This is the judgment of the Lord. No, man. God's wrath was handled at the cross. It's the world saying, church, bring life. 
rebuke this stinking devil that Jesus defeated. You know, if, if you won't do it, here's a hurricane. Ooh, I'm just <laughs> playing a play. But think about it. We can push the hurricanes back, right? Ain't that cool? Tor- tornadoes just, pff, it's wild. So during the triumphant in- entry of Jesus, you know that, right? Where the palm tr- trees were laid down and all that stuff. You remember that? Jesus said something to uh, the Pharisees when the Pharisees called to him from the crowd. They said, teacher, rebuke your disciples for all this mess they're saying about you, right? Oh, you're not that. Let them know that, right? And he says to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? And that's Luke 19, 39 to 40. And then if I go to Romans 8, 19, it says, for the earnest expectation. Can you look at your neighbor and say Expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of every person in the church called Eden today. Amen. For the revealing of the sons of God. Yes, ladies, you are a son of God. Just like we are brides. So if I'm a bride, you're a son. Get over it. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I'm not talking today's perversion. You know what I'm saying. Biblical allegory is what we call that, right? So today, the expectation is a manifestation of the sons of God that can walk throughout the state of Washington or wherever you come from, Ukraine, whatever nation, whatever city, whatever, wherever you come from. The expectation today is for people to become sons of God or know that they are because you are and carry revival every single place you go. Can I tell you something? We all scream another Brownsville, another Toronto, another this, another that. We want that again, that again. No. Revival now is different. Revival is you. You. Yes, God likes visiting places, but for the sake of you being awakened to who Christ has called you to be. Revival in a place should ignite revival in you. Now, statistically, I'll say this, probably two will get it, but I hope we're going to break statistics tonight. Amen? Amen. I know many of you are like, ah, Daniel, ministry time. But if I don't give you just a little bit of understanding, give you a healing, deliverance, prophetic word, word of knowledge, whatever you need, and then you go, thank you, have a good day. It's like visiting a psychic, you know? I'm not a psychic. I'm not your little Reiki healer. (laughs) I understand? I'm not. It just don't work that way. I'm here to tell you who sent me, introduce you to the person who sent me, so that now you can be sent by that same person to represent that person also. Amen? Amen. Listen, we ain't in a new age. We're in the Jesus age. Amen? That's what we're here for. Amen. You know how you can tell a uh, counterfeit spirit versus a person walking with the Holy Spirit, it is so simple. Who do they point to? It's really easy, though, and people miss it all the time. Guys, if you ever hear a preacher, and um, that preacher is doing nothing but talking about themselves, and you don't hear much about Jesus, there is a big red flag. Either that preacher is very undiscipled, and they need a lot of help, or they are actually in it for mammon. They're in it for the wrong reasons. You know, mammon is behind New Age. Mammon is behind psychics. Mammon is behind lust. Mammon is behind Jezebel. Mammon's behind a lot of what goes on because it all rolls down to me, me, me. Jesus specifically named that spirit. He said mammon. He said Beelzebub, mammon, spirit of infirmity. There's some spirits Jesus himself named. Mammon is a big, big problem. So when you have counterfeits, the goal is to come to a service and check the buckets later and see how much come in the buckets. Yeah, it's called a, And then they use the spirit of divination to entice you and seduce you so that you will worship them and continue to give, give, give. That's the goal of a counterfeit spirit, to gain worship, to take glory, so you'll tell their story. Oh, my gosh, Daniel, you're so anointed. <laughs> Oh, thank you, man of God. Thank you today. I can't wait to get to the next service with Daniel and the next service with Daniel and the next service with Daniel. That's sad, ain't it? 
I, I see some people sometimes, I'm like, look, I know you love me, but at least come meet Jesus with me, you know? If you keep meeting me, you're going to you're gonna be mad at me, and you're, like, going to get mad that you didn't get prophesied to, you didn't get healed, Daniel didn't look at me today. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's true. Guys, I will always, I don't play with God, man. It's not a game to me. Jesus will always get all the glory for all things that is done through my life. Period. Amen. He is the one I will point you to. I'm not in this to be famous. I'm not in this to get rich. Even though those benefits seem to come and you try to get away from them and they come. Even Jesus wasn't trying to be famous, but they kept coming after the guy. You know what I mean? But you got to learn even to push that away. People tell me, you know, good job, Daniel, great service, great this. And I'll always say, by the grace of God, glory to God. And they're like, amen, you know? Because if I say, that was a really good service, wasn't it, man? I was preaching. Huh? Wait till you hear my next sermon. And the next sermon's like, you sucked, man. Yeah. It's true. Look, I've been through some hard knocks with the Holy Ghost. You call it the Holy Ghost school of hard knocks. It's a lot better than cemetery. I'm telling you, it's great. Let me encourage you guys. You ready? You ready? I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to come down and talk to you. Let me drink some water. Holy water. Because I touched it and Jesus is in me. It's not a marine spirit. Get over it. I want to tell you this. I am a man with no Bible school, with no seminary. None. Zero. And I'm not against them. Because there's some really great ones. I actually have a school that I've done by some way because I was not the best school person. <laughs> but I had created a whole online school for the forerunners so people can have proper foundation of doctrine. But you know who was my teacher who really teach me on the things of Jesus Christ? The Holy Spirit. I, I looked at the Bible and I said, hey, man, if he can call Peter off a boat, you know what I mean? If he can call Peter off a boat, I'm a cage fighter, man, ex-cage fighter. I don't cage fight now, but you know what I mean? I come off, if he can come off the boat, I can come out the cage. Ah, guys, you don't have to wait for the PhD and to get called Dr. Apostle Prophet. You know what I mean? You don't have to. All you got to do is go and do. And let people that have done all the years of research and wisdom and theological studies and trying to figure out the book of Revelation and all this stuff, look, they still ain't figured that thing completely out. We read it just to know it's coming. But you can confuse them because he'll use the foolish things to confound the wise because as soon as they think they figured it out, they haven't figured it out. Now all of that schooling is like, for what? Jesus desires one thing, relationship. People who are in love with him, submitted to him, and following and obeying him. That's it. If you do that, the Holy Ghost school is easy. Huh? And you know, God put me through school because like, I was hard-headed and I thought I could do a lot of things my own way. So he put me under men and women of God who taught me about a lot of things. I didn't just go rogue. I served people. A lot of people don't know that. I served in ministries. I served an apostle for three years. I was the head evangelist of a church. I was sent out from somewhere. I wasn't just sent on my own. You know, I was commissioned. It's like Paul. He got knocked off the horse, right? But he went right into Jerusalem and started learning from the apostles. You imagine that. That dude was killing everybody. He walks right up to the 12 disciples. What's up, guys? I know I killed your best friend, but I'm here. Imagine that man, the guy that's killing everybody. Ah, ah. Imagine if Joe Biden got saved. See, most of y'all want him out the White House. Why don't we pray that he gets saved, his mind gets right, and he starts to follow Christ? Amen. If he can do it to Paul, he can do it to... Ah, that's my right side Christians. They mad at me now, boy. <laughs> the conservatives just be like, who'd you bring in here? How dare he say that man gets saved? No, seriously, man. You should never look at any man, Democrat, Republican, whatever they are. They all deserve the same thing you have. His name is Jesus. Amen. Remember, if you want somebody to go to hell, you need to go there too. Nobody deserves that. Hell is bad, guys really bad like it's hot hotter than even putting your hand on a stove it's a it's weeping gnashing of teeth it's dark it's bad it's 
terrible. And I'm sure the lake of fire is going to be crazy. I don't want to go there. And I don't want anybody to do that either. I don't care how bad they are. Our desire should be more people in heaven than hell. You know, if you search the internet, you'll find I got an exposed video for saying that, that I want more people in heaven than hell. And I'm like, that's stupid. Why would you want to expose that? Don't you want people in heaven? It says there's a multitude in Revelation. It says there's a multitude before the throne that the eye, you can't even count how many is going to be there. So that shows me there's going to be a lot of people in heaven. Ain't it? They'll always go to the Old Covenant verse, Old Testament verse in Isaiah. They'll say, hell's mouth is wide. And I'm like, show heaven's gates are too. My goodness. Ah, the glory of God. Ah, I love Jesus. And he loves you. So everybody in here, let me tell you something. Of course, go to Bible school. Go to cemetery. If that's seminary. I got to stop saying that. <laughs> seminary. Go to Bible school. Go to seminary. <laughs> What is wrong with me? And, and, and go there if God is leading you to go there. God wants you to go there, go learn, go be equipped, you know. Who's to say, maybe I'll go do a Bible school again somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I want to learn something more, you know. I just, that's why it's out there. I learn from people. I read their books. I've read so many books. i got a whole library of books. John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth. I've got their books. Catherine Kuhlman. Huh? Darren Stott. <laughs> Hey, I got Bobby Connors' book. I'm going to read that thing but on the plane probably. You know, I just, I got Charlie Shamp's book. I like to read the books, man. You know, reading men and women of God's books can be much better than a Bible school sometimes. You get straight impartation. I read a Derek Prince book. You want to cast out demons? <laughs> Let me tell you something, boy. You ain't casting out demons. Get Thou shalt expel demons. There's a page on there that shows you how to lead people through stuff. Sit somebody down in front of it and go through each one. Trust me, you're going to hit a demon somewhere. I promise. Back in 2013, I was on fire for this thing. I had this sweet lady, man. She was probably, uh, probably at that time she's passed now. God rest her soul. But she was like 70 something. Sweetest lady. Glasses. She's a little heavy set, older. Did nails and everything. She loved me, right? Loved me. I said, Hey, I want to test something. Can you sit down? So <laughs> I said, This woman can't be evil, you know. So I said, and she wasn't evil, but something in her was. So she sits there, and I start, I'm younger, right? I, I'm, I'm like zealous. I open this book. <laughs> I got, I got two, uh, two gay people in the other room, and I've just brought all these people into the house, right? So I got a couple of them in there. I got some other people that are living sideways. I had a whole unsaved crew that were just getting to know Jesus. And I'm in this bedroom of the woman's house, and I sit there, and I'm reading, <laughs> I'm reading through the book, and I said, okay, can you do this with me? She, I, I, I'm excited. Yeah, let's do it. So we start to go through it. And I nailed this one place, and it was like something with like um, spirit of rage or something like that. I said, okay, I'm looking at the book, and I said, and it just got quiet. I said, okay. I'm looking down, and I said, this does not feel good right now. Like, this is not feeling good. I know something's about to happen. I kid you not, I look up, man. This woman's fingers had extended. They're right in my face. And she looks at me, her face contorts, and she screams the loudest scream I think I ever heard in my whole life. I said, my goodness, demons are real. <laughs> and you know what else happened? I get done right there. She goes, <coughs> and all comes out, right? I go in the room. The two not happy people, you know, they're sitting there like, <laughs> and the other woman's like, <sighs> and she's smoking. <sighs> yeah, he's it was crazy, man. She just going crazy. And then outside, it's like medieval times. People got their lanterns. <laughs> I promise you can't make it up. They had lanterns. The neighbors are out with like oil lanterns. I'm like, what are we living in here, man? Am I in the medieval, you know, ages? Did I, well, did I just translate backwards? But that was from the Derek Prince book. And then it got on me, and it won't get off. Amen. <laughs> hey, it's crazy. Telling you, man. So, you know, pick that one up and open it and play with your friends. You'll have some stories. <laughs> Y'all take turns with each other. You know, I've even seen people, they'll be praying for their friend. It's so funny. You guys might see it today. They'll, <laughs> no, I'm just playing prayer team. <laughs> it might. <laughs> if you get free, get free. 
they'll, they'll be like, come out, come out. And the one will be like, bah. and then all of a sudden, it's like, and they both go down and they're both going, bah. and I'm like, praise God. Amen. I don't understand it all, man. I really don't. They're trying to cast the spirit out and the spirit's in them. And because the Holy Spirit's speaking through them, getting that spirit out has got to come out of them too. Because it's the Holy Spirit doing the work. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> so I tell people, listen, if you got a demon and you're trying to cast out the demon of somebody else, that demon's going to show up in you too. <laughs> you demon of immorality. And the next thing you know, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I watch it sometimes. They'll be delivering people, and they're like, mm -ha, mm -ha. I'm like, let that thing out, man. <laughs> I'll use me as a story because I like to use myself. Y'all like stories? Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of my backslidden state as a preacher. I get back on the stage and start preaching. Somebody in the crowd makes it aware, like, why are you coughing all the time? Now, sometimes you cough. You know that. Your throat gets dry. But it was an unnormal cough. It's like, <laughs> I'd preach and I'd be like, uh, mm, uh, right? And they were like, yeah, well, this is annoying. Nobody's going to come listen to you. Like, who's going to keep listening to you if you're coughing like literally every five seconds? And I'm like, you got a good point. And my wife's there and I go, I think this is a demon from when I was in immorality as a preacher. And the Holy Spirit had me actually confess in front of the crowd at that time, that season. I'm very transparent. So if you don't like transparency, you ain't going to like me. So I'm standing there, and I'm preaching. And then I told my wife at that she's watching right now. I love you, babe. She, we went to my car. I said, come to the car. You got to lay hands on me, man, because this is, like, bad. I go to the car, and my wife lays hands on me. And I and get this. I'm praying for people, healing the sick, doing amazing things by the grace of Jesus. And I'm going to the car. I get in the car. She lays hands on me, and she got scared at what came out of me. I had the most blood-curdling, murderous cries. Ugh, stuff started coming out of me. It was crazy in the car, man. And my wife helped set me free. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, so that's why I like to give the devil a hard time. Because I've been liberated by our precious Lord and Savior. I've made mistakes. I've been through it. I'm here to testify of the goodness of God in my life. And it doesn't matter where you're at, what you go through. Jesus will meet you. And he will change you. He will transform you because he is madly in love with you. And listen, I don't get into theological discussions on if Christians can have demons or not. It's not I'm not here to do that. I just tell people, if you got one, get rid of it. Because it's destroying your life. Why well, hold on to something that Jesus doesn't want you to hold on to? Right? I have more agendas here than just to cast demons out. But we're going to do it all. He said do it all. We're going to do it all. And, um, yeah, the full gospel. And also, I'll give you one more story of my personal deliverance. So, Because you guys might get delivered through self-deliverance one day, so I want to make sure I give it all to you. So I'm sitting there one day. I'm just starting the supernatural life. And I'm, uh, you know, I, I noticed weird people were coming around me, like really strange folks. Like they were all new agey and stuff. And I'm like, why are these new age people attracted to me? This is weird, you know? So, and all you, you, you exposers are going to love this one. So I'm sitting there. They're like, we knew he had that spurt, you know. So long time ago, though, so years ago. I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm doing a video, and I know I'm delivering something on the video, and I sit there, and I see myself go. And I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, what, whoa, 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 what was that? <laughs> Imagine you're doing it. You don't even know you're doing it when you're delivering to the people, you know. You're like in there, and you see yourself shaking around. I'm like, what the heck is that, man? And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Daniel, you know, you remember when your mom told you that you were prophesied to come into this world by a palm reader? Eh. <laughs> That's right. A palm reader said this boy will be born. So that was good. Praise God. I'm glad the palm reader did that part, but... There were some things attached to it because my mom should have never went to a palm reader. <laughs> you ever know when they open your hand and you got your lifeline stuff and all that? My goodness. So they did that. And, of course, it, you know, stuff happens in our life that our parents allow to happen that shouldn't happen. So I, it, it was a revelatory moment for me of where this thing had come from and why everything was choked out, man. 
You know, when you got a python spirit, a divination spirit on your life, it's like you'll take three steps forward and five steps back. You're like, I'm going to make it, and then, Ugh! what does a python do? It wraps around its victim. It gives it a little leeway to make it think it's escaping, and it Ugh! plays games. And then eventually it devours you. Some of you in here are like, oh, no. Yeah, that's how it works. You're trying to get financially free, and it's like it comes and just snatches the finances out of your life. It's crazy. You're in church, and you're like, am I ever going to get breakthrough? You know, I'm worshiping, I'm doing all this thing, I'm praising, I just can't get breakthrough. And you keep hearing this nagging voice that tries to disguise itself as the Holy Spirit. You get double-minded, and you're like, is this God? Is this not God? I don't know what to do. I'm confused. See, that divining spirit also makes you double-minded. So you can't get the blessings of God because a double-minded person, unstable in all their ways, how can they receive anything from God? So I'm sitting there, I look at that, Holy Spirit speaks to me, and I said, I got brave. I said, hey, it's me and you in here alone. I said, I'm sick of you. I'm talking to that spirit because I'm in the realm of the spirit. I said, today, you little nasty serpent that's been attacking my life for a long time. Me and you, we're about to do battle. I have the sword of the spirit. I'm about to cut your head off. I'm thinking this internally. And my goodness, we went at it. I started in the computer room. I twisted around to the kitchen. I got to the sink. I screamed like crazy, man. I was like, it was crazy, man. Cheeks were going, snot, spit. It's like World War III in that sucker, man. It's like, but that demon had to go. You know what I'm saying? I was going crazy. That snake, I really was like, oh, it is wild. Me and it. You know, after I got set free from that thing, God breathed on the ministry. Generational curses were broken, even on my mom and dad's side. And I've been launched to this day because of that deliverance. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Hallelujah. See, some of you want to be launched. You want to be sent. You want to go. But you got to face the fact there might be something there that's limiting you from being able to step forward into the glory. And it's spiritual. So physically, you've done everything. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I'm speaking to somebody here. You've done everything in the physical you know to do. You've sent seeds. You've sowed. You've, held, you've done everything. You know, you prayed. You've laid on your side 365 days. You're like, nothing's breaking. If you've done all of that, there's only one thing left, and it's called deliverance. The supernatural delivering power of God needs to come up on you and set you free so that you can continue moving forward instead of continue moving backwards. I'll tell you this. If you fell into sexual immorality as a Christian, more than likely this spirit is afflicting your life. If you've done witchcraft, more than likely there's a spirit afflicting your life somewhere. If you've never openly confessed your faults, there's power probably that's still playing in your life. Not because Jesus hasn't forgiven you. He has. It's just it helps to be transparent and open because that lets God know that you've allowed him to have victory over that area of your life. See, the devil does things in secret and dark. You go into a Freemasonry hall. You go to Jehovah Witness hall. There's no windows. There's no nothing. No light can get in. You think that's by coincidence? He wants things to be done in secret. He wants nobody to see it. It's hidden. Huh? <laughs> and then he does stupid things to bring it out in the open and make us seem like we don't know what's happening. He flaunts it in front of our face. But, you know, if it's in secret, it's the devil's playground. My life is literally an open book. I tell on myself more than anybody I know. All, I'm telling you, I tell on myself. The forerunners will tell you too. This man is transparent. He tells everything. If he's struggling, they'll tell you. I'm crazy with it. I'm like, hey guys, struggling. But you're the leader. Yeah, leaders struggle, man. That's been the problem is leaders don't admit that they have qualities that need Jesus to build up too. Uh, there's no perfect leader, man. There's no perfect leader. I'm here to tell you, we are all flawed serving a perfect God who perfects us. Did you catch that? There's nothing wrong with letting, every, letting it all hang out, you know. Now, within reason, because some people are waiting to 
grab something. So there, there's times and places that you let some things be released. So you have to be wise. Don't give all your information out because, it, you know, you know how people are. But if it's a testimony, share it. Once it's not a struggle, share it. Amen? We, I'm telling these stories because in a place like Seattle, in a place like Portland, in a place like uh, California, there's a lot of new age. There's a lot of it. And there's, listen, the marine kingdom is at work big time. Does anybody know about the marine kingdom? Ah, it's a demonic kingdom. It's of the water. And it brings seduction. It brings addiction. It brings really perverted thoughts. Because there's a lot of, like, rituals that go on around the water and stuff. And I know that that spirit is definitely prevalent. It's marine kingdom stuff. To give you an idea, we look at Jezebel. She's the Sidonian queen. If you look at where Sidonia was, there was water. Usually where there's water, the marine kingdom's at. Leviathan, water. Python, jungle, water. You see what I'm saying? Water, we call them water spirits. They're demons, just different demonic kingdoms. Land, sea, air. You get what I'm saying? (laughs) There's a reason. They are in different areas. I'm not here to give you a whole demonic understanding. That's not what I'm here to do. But you need to know your enemy so that you can confront your enemy. I'm sure my African people know what I'm talking about. Amen. (laughs) I travel the world. I've seen a lot. But we serve a God who has defeated the enemy. Amen. Amen. He did what nobody else could do so that you could be free and you could walk in freedom and be a son of God. The message is son of God. If you're a son of God, you have a divine inheritance that was given you at the cross of Calvary. You are sharing with your big brother. <laughs> you are a, he was the first of many sons, right? He has restored things to you. You need to know who you are. I said this the other day. Know who you are and whose you are. Know what you carry. You have an inheritance. How many Christians are in the room? Raise your hand. (laughs) That's a lot of gold, man. You have a divine inheritance that's been given to you. Your Father in heaven has given you so many riches, so many things. You have keys and access. Some of you are like... What keys do I have? See, this is why we read the word because there's thousands of promises that are thousands of keys that you can turn and you can unlock so that you can access the inheritance. But if you ask a Christian, give me one promise, they'll be like, uh, Jesus saves. That's all they can say. No, there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands, three, four thousand, something like that, promises. It's seven thousand, I forget. See, I don't even remember. There's a lot of them though. A lot of promises, man. That is a promise to every problem that you are facing today. The Bible, the Bible has the answer to your problem. He will give you the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. That's a promise. Huh? If you give sparingly, you reap sparingly. Apparently, you give in a plentiful way, you will reap in a plentiful way, right? If you humble yourself below, by the, to the Lord, he will hear your prayers, he will answer you, he will restore your land. See, some of you need your land to be restored. Some of you want to buy houses. Some of you want to do a lot of things. Know the promises of God. Oh, Lord, and say, have you said the Jabez prayer? Have you ever said that? Some, many people didn't. Expand our territory. Huh? Tell him to increase your tent pegs. Speak to the Lord. He says, you have not because you ask not. Do you feel worthy to ask a holy God who loves you for things? Well, you know, he's too, I'm not good enough. How would I look asking? But can I tell you something? Listen, me and my wife bought a house, and my house is amazing. And I'm going to tell you why. I asked the Lord, and he has a sense of humor. I said, Lord, the house I have, I want two bathrooms in my bedroom. I'm going to stop there. You know what I'm saying? My bathroom, her bathroom. My wife will tell you. So, so we're praying to buy a house. And, you know, I'm thinking house, nice, whatever, right? And, you know, it's hard finding the perfect house for you. Man, I pull up to the house. 
I look at this house. I was like, I knew it. I said, that's my house. I didn't care what the price was. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was my house. As I get closer, I see two eagles. At the entry, they're, they're waiting for me. They're like little eagles on the thing. I was like, what? We pull into it, and we prayed, Lord, give us a house, you know? Because I didn't want to be a random my whole life. It's good to have your own thing. You can do a lot more. So I go into that thing. I pull up. We go inside. We're looking. I get into the master bedroom, and lo and behold, there's two bathrooms. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, he will give you the... Don't go small with God. He, who, you want a house, right? Your own house. You are worthy of that. Know in your heart what you want. There's nothing wrong. If you want a 6,000 square foot home, ask for it. You want a 10,000, it's fine. Just make sure it's for his purposes. Things that happen in my house, you can ask them. People are always in my house for kingdom reasons. People are always in the studio there. Like, it's just what I do. I use my house for the Lord. For me and my house, I'll serve the Lord. Don't be selfish with it. If he gives it to you, use it for kingdom purposes. Make disciples. Keegan says, man, I might as well live in your house. I'm not even at my house. Amen. <laughs> I receive. He even tries to escape out of my door sometimes. And I said, come here. <laughs> Mark's easier. He loves it. He's just chilling, you know. But Keegan needs his alone time. Amen. And then he, cr then he cries because he's alone. I'm like, get it together, dude. What do you want? Amen. <laughs> he's like, I feel like I'm in a doghouse. I'm like, you put yourself there. I didn't put you in a doghouse. <laughs> anyway, I'm telling on these guys. We have fun. We really do. We really do, man. I'm just chilling with you guys. But God gives you the desires of your heart. Some of you need to ask big. Ask big. And then so big to ask big. Test God. Try him, man, with, especially with your finances. Nothing else, though, because that's not smart. But test him with your finances. You know what? Some of you have bills, and I'm going to talk about money, and I know you all hate that, but you need deliverance. Listen, I'm not scared of talking about money. I went to a church. All they talk about is money. That's because you, maybe God needs you to hear about money. I don't want your money. God does. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Some of you need breakthrough. Some of you want big things. Some of you want to be used mightily, but you so minimum. Well, uh, maybe God's saying empty your savings account into mine. <laughs> but Lord, I've saved up for 15 years. And no, I'm not trying to get you to give me your savings account. Just hear what I'm saying. Don't... He might be saying, put it here in the storehouse and watch the deposit you've put when you can come make, a, the, the withdrawal is going to be huge. I'm telling you, I'm a living witness of it. I've given big amounts. I've turned around. It's happened to me several times on my hand I count. I'll give a big amount. I'll turn around and somehow that big amount is right back. I'm like, I get it. I get it. I can give. I ne I'm telling you, there's many of you here. You will not outgive me. I promise. I am a crazy nut job giver. I love blessing people. Oh, I love blessing people. It makes my heart merry. You just wait. Ah, people will be blessed through my life. Not only will I have what God has, wants for me, I will give people what they need for the kingdom too. I want to be that way, don't you? Don't you want to plant churches for pastors who have been trying to plant churches for years? Don't you want to be the answer to somebody's prayer? Don't you want to be that blessing that they need? Don't you want to be able to be obedient anytime God speaks because God knows you have more than enough to give to anybody who needs it? We don't need to live at the bare minimum. We need to live at the maximum. We are maximum Christians. Uh, Y'all are really quiet on this one. God has more than enough. I put, I put money on it, literally. If I look at y'all's checkbooks, 
mm, Starbucks, restaurants. Y'all giving more to the lady on the cup than y'all to church, you know? Ah, you're feeding your belly more than you're feeding God. See, our bellies will get full. Then we get fat. And we blame God for all that. Now we're out of whack. Don't worry, buddy. I got a few too. But ask yourself, next time you get a chat, look at your online statement and say, my goodness, that man of God was right. I'm really not doing good at this. And it's not to condemn you. It's just to show you that you can actually give more than what you have been. People, you know, it's funny. They'll see that we take up ticket costs for conferences because people have no idea what we have to do. They don't understand all this. But yet those same people are feeding the restaurant businesses incredibly. They're giving AT&T and Verizon all their money. But as soon as it goes to giving God some money, how dare the church charge for a conference? That's wicked. But you give your money to wicked people. I don't know about you. I'd pay for a conference any day in a church over some of this other stuff. Amen. Uh, uh, Taylor Swift and Beyonce is getting way more money than the church. There's a problem. And Beyonce needs to come back to Jesus. If you're watching, get your butt back in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. <laughs> when Jesus says, yes, nobody can say no. Yeah. <laughs> she needs to sing that again. Let's start putting things in the kingdom because there's promises waiting to manifest, waiting to be given to you at inheritance. You can make a withdrawal any time. Uh-oh, what happened? Uh, is it a child? Somebody's being delivered? What's happening? It's deliverance? Ah. Oh, it's deliverance. Is it deliverance? <laughs> I, I'm just preaching, man. I'm just talking. <laughs> I must, I mean, just hang in here. It's going to get better. <laughs> Wow. It's deliverance, right? Amen. Just want to make sure. I mean, we can raise the dead. We can do it all. But I just got to know what we're dealing with. So, let's focus back on what's being said. With sons and daughters of God, there's going to be manifestations of God's goodness. Even now, look, I'm talking about money and the demons coming out. <laughs> God wants to set the captives free. He wants us to be a prosperous people. He doesn't want that ser serpent to hinder us any longer. He doesn't want us to be bound any longer. He wants us to prosper. Look at your neighbor and say, today. Actually say, tonight. You will prosper. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I know I'm walking around a lot. What I'm doing is talking and listening because I'm going to move when he says move. Just hang with me. We're going to ride this bike to where we need to go. <laughs> Amen. I'd rather do what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do than do what I want to do. Amen. The truth will set you free. I speak the truth for the sake of your freedom. Amen. The truth shall set you free. I feel like the Lord wants me to talk about gossip too. We must get gossip out of the church. We have to stop speaking against our mothers, our fathers, our co-workers that make us mad. You know what gossip is, right? Let me give you a demonstration. Man, did you see so-and-so? I bet they're not going to be nothing in life, and I bet they're just going to mess up. Just curse after curse after curse. You know, that preacher, blah, 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 right? If you don't got nothing good to say, don't. Say nothing at all. We have to stop gossiping, guys. It really grieves the heart of God. Murmuring in our hearts when nobody else is listening. Do you know everything that's said in your heart, the Spirit is listening? Huh? Is there more manifestors or just one? 
I think we're going to pop off here in a minute, man. <laughs> ah, I might as well get the keyboardist up here now. You know, I think one of the biggest hindrances when we come together is not only doubt and unbelief, but is how we talk about one another when we're not around. Even you in this church, in any church, before you get ready to curse somebody and say something about the person you serve with in a bad way, think about it, stop yourself and get ready to say something good about them. Bless them before you curse them. Even today, as this service comes to an end later and the Lord has convicted you or whatever, go back to that person and say, hey, I just want to ask for forgiveness because there was this one time that this was going on in your life and, like, I got to let you know that it won't cool what I said and I just want to release you from this thing because it was really dumb of me. I'm telling you, there'll be so much breakthrough. Do you know you Christians have power in your mouth? Do you know some people are walking with problems because of things that you've said? Do you know that? There's times when I can go into a place, and before I get there, I can know the things that they said before I get there. I'll get right in front of the pastor, and I'll be like, you dirty sucker, I know what you said before I got here, but I'm here now. <laughs> it's true, not you. <laughs> but you probably had the same thing. You just know, you feel it in your spirit. Somebody's been talking about you before you even get there. I've been in clicks, and they think I don't know that they've been clicking about me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not a click guy. Anytime you hear that chatter, that uneasiness in your spirit, usually somebody is saying something that they shouldn't be saying. They're speaking witchcraft at you. We got to watch our tongues. Remember, the Bible says the tongue unbridled is a dangerous thing. It's like a little match to a forest fire, a match that will turn into a forest fire. Unhindered words, unhinged words are dangerous. I hope you're convicted in a good way. <sighs> Can we prophesy? Can we do that? We can prophesy. <laughs> prophesy. Amen. Can we get words of knowledge? Amen. Amen. Can we see breakthrough? Amen. Can we see healing? Amen. Can we see miracles? Amen. Signs and wonders? Amen. Can we see God's people go from glory to glory? Amen. I know it's been a little bit of a, a serious conversation, but it's just cleaning the threshing floor so that the King of Glory can walk in. That's all. That's all we're doing. It doesn't matter how bad we feel or how many mistakes we've made. I mean, that's why the blood of Jesus is there. That's why forgiveness is there. Do you know there's a spirit called unforgiveness? You know, I can come to some of you very simply, and I could do something like this. Not you. <laughs> You're a sweet guy. I can tell you have a big heart done a lot for a lot of people, man. You see, you're easy up through here. That means you haven't been carrying a huge yoke. I believe you're a praying man. I believe that you have a pastoral heart. Where you see the best in people. You're a father. And you've done a good job, and the realm of the Spirit has noticed that. Huh? You're like an underground boss, you know what I'm saying? But there's sometimes I can go and you know, just, I hope it's okay if I touch you. you know, I can touch a person, and just from the touch, I can start to feel years. Like when I touch this lady right here, I see family, and I see the load that she carried for so long. And I see the battles that she had to fight. I see the prayers that she had to put up to even get to where things are at today. This woman has battled and fought and battled and fought. And the body carries that. And many are blessed because of your fighting and before you, because you did not give up. Even when curses were thrown your way, even when your body was affected because of the words of others, you just kept going on. You said, I refuse to quit until I see the breakthrough that you have promised me. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that true? Yes, sir. Very true. Ah, you're a sweet girl. Even when you're young, you had to grow up fast. 
do things really early. We were born premature, real premature. You've carried yet loads early. Wow, huh? Ah, I love the sweet, humble ones, you know? The ones that, here I am, Lord, just whatever you need. Your mansion is huge. It's big. It's really big. I saw you by the Spirit in heaven. I know people won't understand this, but she's right here. No, she's in heaven. Listen, because we're seated in heavenly places. We're already there. Get there. I see you watering these wonderful flowers. They're sitting on windowsills. They're beautiful. You know, there's seeds that are planted in your garden now. When you get up there, the flower garden you're going to have it's amazing there's so many different colored flowers and they represent the little ones that you bless throughout your life they're blossoming because of your life you see when we do things on earth it affects heaven it affects the end result we're preparing for a destination and Jesus is there preparing a place for us He's getting it ready. Angels are putting things together. That's why, why would we continue to waste time with unnecessary battles and trivial things that lead to nothing? For what? Why do we keep battling these things? Ah, there's so many nations in here. I keep looking around and seeing your faces. My goodness, this is heaven in here. Amen. <laughs> this is Eden, man. My goodness. But you know, just the touch of a person can tell you so much. yoke is easy his burden is light huh? like my friend Scott here ah a warrior a servant one that does not complain he just gets the job done if it's something that need be done this man will do it huh? great is thy reward for thy faithfulness do you know that Great is thy reward for their servanthood. Your family had generational curses broke off of them simply because of you and your wife's yes. The whole generations are changed because Amen. of you guys' yes. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful. Mm. What is your name? Brittany. Why are you here, Brittany? You are. That's your mom. They got to mic me up. They don't want to miss nothing. You know, the Lord starts to show me some things. Um, Mama, tell me, why am I seeing your stomach? So not only did I see your stomach, I saw this stomach. So I'm seeing a connection in the stomach region. I believe there's something with birth that I'm starting to, to, uh, to, to catch and capture here. From the womb proceeds your children. Your brother's who, he's, who she's standing for and you too. I started to see, by the Spirit, a ship on the sea, and I started to see troubled water. And what I'm thinking is, during the time of you having your boy in the womb, I saw troubled water. I saw a time and a season where he had to go with you through some troubled times. Does that bear witness? Mm -hmm. And what happens in the womb to us will affect us later on if we're not careful. Somebody said, oh. What the enemy likes to do is to continue the assignment from generation to generation. And he wants to make us tired. He wants to wear us out, you know. I saw an assignment. Now I'm seeing an assignment that I'm meant to cancel. So when you guys hear me say, I see an assignment of the devil, it's because God wants me to cancel that assignment. 
I saw where there was an attack of troubled water. I saw that the enemy, now I know that you're not having babies right now. But I saw an assignment, and by me merely talking about this, what's going to happen is there's going to be a res re restoration of the troubles that came while your children are in your womb. Now, is your husband around? He's not here. He's at home. Is he a Christian? Yes. Does he love Jesus? Yes, we do. Absolutely, Amen. 100%. Absolutely. Okay. Is he, he's not a pastor, is he? <laughs> Teacher, but he loves the word. He loves the word. He's a man of God. Okay. Because where the enemy wanted to cause trouble, he wanted the children that you have to experience some of the same problems. I feel like the Lord is telling me there is a promised son for your life. It's like I'm hearing two words. I'm hearing, I'm hearing, it, it, I'm trying to figure, is it Adonijah or Elijah? Adonijah or Elijah? I know you don't. Just hang with me. <laughs> I said I knew that. But the Lord is starting to bring names to my spirit. Can somebody tell me what the word, and maybe Google it for me or something. I don't know what Adonijah means. Adonijah. There's, huh? Yeah, that's the name of God, but Adonijah, is that literally what it means? It says, according to 2 Samuel, Adonijah was the fourth son of King David. Yeah. Hmm. You have how many children? You have two. So you'll get a double portion then, huh? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Prophesy. Now, did you have any troubled times with your children when they were being birthed? I don't think so. I, I'm trying to see my son. You uh, came right on out. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. We're going back in the memory brink. Hold on. When I got ready to have him, mm -hmm. they were, um, the anesthesiology was in the room, mm -hmm. and it took him a while to um, find the right place to put the needle uh -huh. and stuff, but it didn't happen for the fact of it, he was in there too long, and then he just came out. And to this day, I thank God for the fact of if he would have given me that shot, I probably would have been paralyzed because it's how long it took him, over 45 minutes. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I'm right. We just have mm -hmm. to find it. You see? Mm -hmm. The enemy had a plan from the womb. Mm -hmm. The enemy wanted to continue it. Mm. But today, what you suffered with, your daughter will not. Mm. The Amen. assignment will not happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, I believe I started to see your son as a mighty evangelist. Yes. Yes. Thank you. God. A charismatic one. Yes. A bold one. Yes. A fearless one. Yes. One yes. who will not sit still. Yes. One that will go. I saw the mantle of the evangelist on your son's life. Yes. And I felt like the Lord said to encourage the mother that no matter what Satan believes that he can throw, no matter what person could come around the corner, the Lord is very good at answering the prayers of a righteous person. And they availeth much. Amen. Your prayers are keeping your son from trouble and he will see success in the kingdom. The things you see now, you will not see later. The suffering you see now, you will not see later. 
this fervent and righteous prayers availeth much. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. You are a righteous one. The Lord says, I have not seen the righteous begging for bread, nor their offspring. He says, I clothe the birds of the air. I mean, I feed the birds of the air, I clothe the flowers of the field. How much will I not do that for your son? Mm. Your son will be okay. I'm a voice of confirmation of what you pray for. That's all I'm here to do. Amen. Let me touch your heads. Be free from the heaviness. Be free from the burdens. Be free from the demonic assignments against your family. May your son serve the Lord all the days of your life and all the days of his life. In Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. 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 So listen, I know it's a little bit of a shock when I come up to you, especially if you're not used to me navigating the waters of your life. Um, I'm learning that I'm really not wrong when I do it. It's just people are in like shock. They're like, <laughs> and then I have to hang with you just to get to where we need to go. I heard there was somebody that came from Ethiopia. Are you here? No, there's somebody that traveled from Ethiopia. You guys. Oh, your sister. I want my Ethiopian brothers and sisters to come here. The Lord has heard your request. <laughs> Hello. My goodness, there's many, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Did you know you had this much Africans in your church? My goodness. I don't want to even call Africa up. All y'all will be up here. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So all of you, who's the culprit of all of these people? My goodness. Ah, we have NBA players over here. What in the world? Ah, this is deep. Who's, are all y'all relatives? How did y'all get so tall, man? What do they feed you guys? Wheaties. Yeah, them Wheaties are deep. <laughs> so who, who, how did you guys get here? Who can't, who can't, who'd you come with? Do you go uh, here? Nah. You saw me and you pulled up. Yeah, on social media. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Ah. Whose dad deals with the hard prop, the back, back, bit, like a really bad back? Is it? It's you. His back hurts, but um, yeah, I wouldn't call it a problem because he doesn't really complain about it much. But like, it's when we yeah, when we try and like do like physical activity and stuff like that, he's like, I hurt my back a little bit ago. So oh, he's, he's being tough. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I was hearing that there's somebody up here. Your dad's really suffering with that lower back issue. Mm. You no, know? and it's actually uh, hindering a big hindering problem. Mm. It's funny you've seen it. You know, who's your brothers? Um, him and. Is that right? Your, the dad's kind of suffering. Yeah. What about your back? Uh huh. Even I couldn't even sit in class because, because I saw what was happening to your dad happening to you. Yeah, it was it was it was it was bad in high school, and my mom was like taking me everywhere to get prayer. But then yeah, I'm fine now, hundred percent. I'm fine. I couldn't even play soccer and anything, sit in class, but it's, it's fine. Now it's healed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I see. Can I do something? You believe in Jesus, obviously. You wouldn't. Hundred percent. Amen. Let me see something. Mm. Yeah. Shift. Uh, shift. Oh, 
all the way. It's a, it's a, uh, what I'm doing is getting that generational problem off your back, you know? So it doesn't follow from your, from, to your offspring. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, Did you guys travel here? This is my second time here. It's your second time here? I just follow you in the social media. Uh, who is this? She's my friend. That's your friend. You live here? Yeah. You live here? Yeah. Why, why, why does the year, it's a year that's popping into my spirit. I see the year 1983. It's my birthday. It's, your, it's, your, it's the year you were born? Yes. 1983. I, 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 it's deep, man. I saw that year, and I saw that you were, okay. What year were you born? 82. 82? What year were you born? 79. 79? 19. 83. Let me let me speak. It might be for your husband. Let me speak. 1983, I saw a birth that was trying to be stopped. I saw one of the parents had become suicidal. Huh? Yeah? He told me that story, yeah. He told you that story? Mm-hmm. So it's for your husband. Yeah. One of the parents had become suicidal. His dad. Huh? His dad. He died? His dad. His dad. Mm. And didn't want to live anymore. Yeah, he was a preacher. He passed away. Now. He was a preacher. He was. Mm. Is your husband a preacher? I uh, know. He's not. But Does your husband deal with that same attack sometimes you see, like depression and heaviness, or is he not suffering with no, that? Not anymore. He's not. Because the reason I believe the Lord is showing me this is because where there was sabotage, the enemy tried to sabotage the birth because of the great promise. Generation curse. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a continued curse? I feel it. Okay. I feel that. But, but it's because he's a promise. Yeah. And you need to take this word that I'm giving you today to him. Amen. And you need to tell him that the Lord says you are a promise. And you are going to carry legacy. And where death was meant, you will bring life. Your husband will not suffer. Your husband will not die early. He will live a long life. And he will continue the work that the Lord was meant to be started. Yes. I'm so sorry. Amen. Amen. Y'all just hang with me. I think it's Sunday night. I'm okay. If you got to go to work, just pray for God's grace. Amen. <laughs> I'm traveling up here, man. <laughs> We're in the spirit, man. I, um, it's for one of you. I also saw kidneys. And kidneys represent, I heard this the other day. It's really crazy. It's coming to me now. Anointing. I believe there has been a witchcraft attack somewhere that has been wanting to steal the anointing from your life. Wait. You know how you're crying and you're feeling all the heaviness and the attacks on your life and all of this stuff? The enemy is wanting to sabotage you and to steal the anointing from you. You know, Delilah visited Samson and tried to steal the anointing. Have you suffered with relationships? Yes. Yes. Has that been a big problem? There's been a siphoning spirit that's been trying to come after your life and siphon what God has wanted to do. And I, I believe you've been trying to save people. You've been trying to help wrong people. 
They just want to take, 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 take. You give, 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 <laughs> give, give, and they take, they take, they take. Today, you will no longer run into those circles of people. Be free. Mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. That serpent is leaving your life. You will not be sabotaged. The grace of God goes with you. The enemy will not steal from you any longer. Now, I break this from your life now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Full run for your family. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Whose name starts with an M? Wait. <laughs> M-A. So I heard two names. I heard a Marcus and an Xavier. No? Is there an Xavier in the house? Is there a Marcus in the house? Just wait. Mark, Mark is my husband. Who? Mark is my Mark husband. Mark is your husband. Why do I keep getting stuff about you guys' husband? What's going on here? Uh-huh. <laughs> is Mark here? Yes. Come here, Mark. <laughs> Amen. Mark, are you a businessman? You're a realtor. You're a businessman. Come over here. <laughs> Please. Por favor. Thank you. <laughs> Mark, you know as you were walking up here, I saw such a successful man. I mean a lot of success. And I know that might not be the story of your life now. But as you took steps, I saw a businessman. You said a realtor, but I think you're more than a realtor. Do you know you're more than a realtor? Yeah. Are you a Christian? I think so. Oh. <laughs> I think so. God called Mark. <laughs> uh, you may not understand all of what I'm about to say and do. It'll make sense to you though, okay? I'm going to unload on you. You know what that means? I'm about to hit you with Holy Ghost bombs. Are you ready? So, Mark is a businessman. I saw before you a table and I saw a layout of land. Yes, you're a realtor, but you are a realtor of realtors. I saw you not only selling houses, but owning houses. I saw a house in four different regions on this table. And the Lord is telling me, Mark, I believe by his spirit, that you are going to plant houses for him in four regions. And I saw a map. It was divided into four places. And I believe it is in the state of Washington. And this will become from what you've learned over time and the experience that you have gained. This is going to be like a father believing in his son. This is God showing his goodness to you. I saw the number of grace. I saw the number five. And that means this. Five years from now, 2024, 25, 26, 27, 2028. Something will happen with the housing market between now and then. I heard a boom in the spirit as I was speaking to you. It was like, boom. There's going to be a boom in the housing market. People are saying right now that there's going to be a huge decline. I don't know what you're seeing as a realtor, but what I'm hearing is boom. And I believe you will benefit from the boom. You understand? Just now ride with me. I said you might not get it all right now. <laughs> you will benefit from the boom, your family, you. And as things are happening, I am also seeing the word restoration come in between. There's going to be a restoring of some things that were lost within the intimacy of relationship. You're not a bad husband, you're a good husband. 
You're not a bad wife, you're a good wife. I saw the enemy, man. He was like trying to steal years from you guys. Just year after year, just trying to pluck years off the calendar and make you both very weary and worn out. You are a man of promise. You are a man of blessing. Okay? You will not end up like the generations before you. Okay? <laughs> I hope it's not too deep for you. I'm telling you, you're a man of promise. You're a man of blessing. God has big plans for you to do big things here in this state to cause a big change. Today as I prophesy these things to you, the Lord is sending angels to work on your behalf. To grow you, to change you, to exalt you in the name of Jesus Christ for his glory. The man you see now, you will not recognize. He's going to take on a big change here very soon. His love for the Lord is going to be ever increasing. I heard the Lord said, he will become a man of prayer. He will hold your hand. He will read the Bible. Hold your hand. He will read the Bible and he will pray. Amen. I don't know if you're a praying woman. I believe you are. You're Ethiopian. You pray. Yes, <laughs> that means he's in trouble in a good way. Right? right? Are you a praying man? Most of the time. You will hold her hand. You will read the Bible and you will pray and the Lord will bless you extravagantly. You will become a realtor of realtors. You will have realtors under you. You understand? It will be amazing, man. You will plant many amazing things for the Lord and you will prosper. You will be a rich people for the kingdom. Can I pray for you? Lord, I thank you for this wonderful couple, this wonderful man. Lord, thank you that you will father him and show him how much of a son he is. I breathe life into him. I breathe life into you. I don't resist the grace of the Lord. Lord, remove the burden. Amen. Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Ah, you're a good friend, aren't you? I don't know. Huh? Uh, you I are don't a good know. friend. Yeah. Look at how close you are. Believe in yourself. Believe in who God's called you to be. You are a leader. Amen. You're meant to lead many. Amen. This is one woman of many. You will help restore them into who they're supposed to be. Don't let the enemy make you doubt what you've been called to do. You know you're a preacher. Prophesy. You are a preacher. Ah. You will stand, you will preach, and the glory of God will fall. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Your voice will become loud. He will raise you in a time such as this to be a voice of hope to the hopeless, to bring broken women into restoration. Do you understand? There will be so many women inhabiting your house it'll be crazy receive it in jesus name in jesus name and may the burden and affliction of the enemy be believed from you it, listen i'm saying something right now i command the attack of witchcraft to come off of your body now you can't have her you can't attack her you can't afflict her you will not attack her mind you will not attack her body you will not attack her family Amen. be free and Amen. receive grace in jesus name health your health the enemy wants to sabotage your health mm -hmm. some people would say Daniel why do you talk so much about what the enemy is doing because I have to get the enemy's barricades out of the way mm -hmm. so that the blessings can flow yes sometimes we're afflicted by things we don't know we're afflicted by until the Lord reveals a word of knowledge and now we can set the people free amen amen I saw you weary I saw you not being able to get the energy to go throughout the day at times. You just become tired. I also saw in the night, I, f I was in the spirit and I saw in the night, uh, I, saw, I, I saw a dark figure. And I, as I was standing there while you were sleeping, now this happens while you sleep. I was standing there and I was looking at this spirit 
when I was in the room and I'm like, why are you trying to come and uh, uh, visit her? And I felt like I heard the voice of that thing say to me, Daniel, I make her tired. I want to wear her out because we can attack her health. We can sabotage her health. So we look at that spirit and what do we say to it? Your health will not be the target of the enemy anymore. Your life will be extended. Now tell me what I say. Is it true? Yes. It's true. Yes. I'm seeing your age. I'm seeing the age of six years old. Mm -hmm. I saw at the age of six year old that this was a time where this thing was starting to really afflict you. There was a tra uh, not a traumatic, but a, uh, it might have been traumatic, but a mm -hmm. tough moment around that time of your age. What happened mm -hmm. at six years old? I moved to America. You moved to America. Mm -hmm. It was pretty heavy for a child, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you went from one nation to another nation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you understand it at the time? I didn't. And you tried to figure it out. Yes. This is where the spirit attached and came. Mm. Was in the midst of that move. And this is why it's been hard to like really step into all that you have wanted to step into. Mm. But you got to understand it wasn't the enemy moving you. It was God moving you. Because he had to change the course of your family. You have to be the change. You have to be the course changer. He had to get you out of the norm of what everybody was used to because he knew that the oppression that had followed your family for so long was going to continue. So he said, I want to take this woman. I want to uproot the family. I want to move them even though circumstances look crazy so I can get this woman here so she can walk in the destiny that I've had for the family for a long time. You remember Abraham had to get out of what he was used to to go and see the promise and inheritance that he was promised to have, right? The same thing is for you. Do you have children? Yes. Are they here? No. Okay. Are they serving the Lord? She's eight. Yes. She's eight. She will serve the <laughs> yes. Lord. Because you have an inheritance. I said Abraham, but you're a Sarah. Amen. Meaning you have children of promise. Amen. No longer will you be visited. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her health go. Let her mind go. Let her body go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that has afflicted her, held her back, not allowed her to move forward. I command it to be broken now. In Jesus' name. season of peace the stress you've been dealing with it leaves today <laughs> Jesus name be free well bring this one to me stand her up come here come here bring that girl here ah the Lord spoke to me fast are you ready look at me you what's your name you're a woman, mm -hmm. a woman of God. Mm -hmm. The enemy wanted to shift your identity mm -hmm. and make you believe a lie. Where's your family? My twin sister, adopt twin. adopted from Ethiopia. I just saw you, uh -huh. and now it all makes sense. Step four. This is about to get very, very good. Come on. Hallelujah. It's about to get real good. The enemy wanted to pervert you guys' life and make you believe that you were something that you were not. I didn't even see you, I saw her. And I looked and you said, your sisters. And I'm like, the enemy tried early to make you feel like you're orphans. You're not good enough, you're not worthy. I would almost bet something happened at one time that tried to steal or did steal purity, right? It really afflicted your mind. It made yeah. you not understand yeah. things appropriately. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. How yes. old are you guys? We're gonna almost 15. 15, almost 15. Almost 15. Wednesday's our birthday. Wednesday's your birthday. Yeah. Man, wow. Man. You're about to get a wonderful birthday present. Amen. 
Where do you know where your real biological mother is? Oh, so. Hold on. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> but do you know where she is? Uh, no. Wait. No. Is she in another country? Yes. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't get nervous. It's gonna be good. Just hang with me. Uh, is your is your adopted family here? Mom, Where is she at? Bring her. Oh, she is? Okay, I hope you hear me down there, Mom. Yeah. She is? She is? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Because this is going to be really good. Amen. Do you want to say something? I saw you open your mouth. I thought you wanted to say something. Oh, you're the adopted. Well, you're the mom. Excuse me. You're mom. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad you're here. You can help me. Trust me, it's going to be okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw everything out there. They're safe. They're safe. She's a protective mom. My goodness. Woof. Now I'm scared. <laughs> Do I have permission? Can I say what the Lord is showing me? Yes. Okay. I saw where the enemy tried to sabotage their identity. I saw where things had happened. But I'm going to tell you, I saw their real mother in the spirit. And I heard the Lord say that there will come a time of a family reunion. I feel like I hear that mother's prayers. I don't know if you know her. I've met her. Something is transpiring and something is happening in her life. I saw her heart starting to change. And I heard the words family reunion. The Lord has planned before they turn 20, there will be a family reunion and a lot of questions are going to be answered. Things that you understand but they don't. You're going to see a grace come on them of understanding that has not been there. And you will not stop being mom. You're, going, you're receiving the blessings of being a mother. My goodness, is wonderful. The Lord blesses people who adopt, make them their own. You know, being a parent isn't just being, you know, everybody can be a sperm donor. But not everybody can be a parent. You're blessed because of that. You know this. It's Thank biblical. You. Yes. These girls, especially you, I have a wild one, a exuberant one, a vocal one, and I have an isolation one that really battles in the mind. But you also can see. Very much so. You know her? You are going to be a wild prophet. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to help you with your character now, okay? People will not understand you. Don't expect them to. No prophets understood. Don't get used to having many friends. Get used to having few friends, but get used to being loved by this church. You have a safe place here, I believe. But the world, other Christians, they're not the nicest people. Don't let them afflict your journey, okay? The Lord started to show me your hands. As you held your hands out, I saw you carrying gifts. You will be a gift giver there's gifts that have been given to you that will be given to other people after you have long left this earth they will write books about you and the gifts yeah. that you gave to others prophesy I saw a time of a name the name didn't start with M or anything to Candace you named her Candace yes the Lord showed me that name Candace I saw the name change. There was a name change here. Hmm. 
But attached to the old name was also a family blessing that don't forget about. Because the prophetic mantle is coming down from that name. That's why your family dealt with so much rejection. Now, I don't know much about the mother, but was there much like seduction and giving away of herself and stuff like that? The mother, things done wrong to her. I don't, you don't have to get really deep, but just a little bit of an understanding. I am not exactly sure, mm -hmm. but their father is not in the picture at all. Okay. Because I, I'm, I believe I'm seeing a picture of some other things. Well, I, I'm seeing painting too. I'm an artist. Huh? That's me. I'm an artist. You're the artist. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You're also taking on that mantle. Amen. You will paint because of your mother's painting. You see, whatever we're attacked, attached to, we get the blessing of too. You have, you have, my goodness, you're so blessed. You have generational blessings. <laughs> you're carrying multiple blessings. You're carrying multiple blessings. I feel like letting you know you're not overlooked. Never think you're overlooked. Never think that the eyes are not on you. God's eyes are up on you. You're a child of promise. I'm going to pray for her. She's going to get crazy set free. Be free. Come off of her. Come off of her. May the pains that nobody sees, may the things in your heart that nobody sees, may everything that has afflicted you, everything that has tried to prevent you from being the woman of God that you're called to be, I command that serpent that has tried to choke your life out to unwrap from your life now, not to talk to you, not to sabotage you, not to pervert you. I command right now in Jesus' name, be made whole. May you not be overlooked ever again. May all things be made new. I la mande rosolema, brisica levando, bretilemande evrasevla, brotende vrasiv roso tolemese. You are a firebrand. You are a fire carrier. You will purge people of the enemy. You will be able to remove the things of Satan from many people's life. There is a deliverance mantle on your life. You will open your mouth. You will speak bold. You will tell the truth, and the truth shall set people free in Jesus name amen. hallelujah amen open your hands say Lord give me everything give me everything you have for me you have for me ignite ignite the prophetic mantle the prophetic mantle Perfectic mantle that you have for me. That you have for me. I'm ready. I'm ready to be molded. To be molded the way you want me to. The way you want me to receive it. Receive it, girl. Watch. The internal battles are lifting from your shoulders. Right now. Right now. The unforgiveness towards yourself. Uh huh. The things nobody saw upon your shoulders. The weight of feeling responsible even for your sister. I command that to come off of you now. In Jesus' name. It's not your burden to bear. <sighs> Receive. Touch your stomach. Receive the gift. May prophecy birth. And may the mantle of that grace come upon you now. In Jesus' name, bless the Lord for the grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. You boys cannot be this tall unless you're playing sports. Ah, y'all got a ball so hard, huh? You ball. Basketball. Mm -hmm. yeah. Football. Basketball. 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 Knee injury. Any knee pains? You. Because I saw a knee injury that wanted to prevent you from going further. Is it that one? It's that, it's your knee. You feel, is it cart? Uh, I, that's what you want, Mark. Ah, you better today. Man. It's real simple when we pray. And we're going to pray for everybody, guys. Just let me finish this lineup. But when we pray, the Holy Spirit will fill you. If you've repented of your sins, if you've made Jesus Christ your bestest friend, then the Holy Spirit will come upon you, will be filled, and you will be launched into your call and destiny. Now, I see some struggles here. It's okay. Lay it before the Lord. He'll also set you free. You understand? 
really quick prophecy. Can I shotgun some things real quick? You have a mantle full of money. Wait. Now, now, hold on. When I say this, I'm not saying right now. There's a process, okay? Some prophetic people will tell you, you're getting money now. That can happen. It's coming, okay? But this thing has to shut down so that this thing can come alive, so that this thing can take over this thing, and so you can move forward with the vision God has for you. There's a blind to come things like that. You need more. Like with the tall woman in life and trying to stop you. I even saw the word marriage. Wait. You're a good-looking kid. Wait. I saw a woman, and it's a well-meaning girl, but it's a girl with daddy issues. I mean to try to... Man. Look, at the end of a battle, I want to give you what we do. Clear and be watching. Amen. Means is if we try to th overthink the process, and what I'm saying is this, you have zeal. You want to go. You know God has called you. You even know that the Lord has put revival in your spirit. Yeah. You're still in school, right? Yeah, I am. You're not a senior yet? No, I'm a junior. Just like him. By your senior year, mm -hmm. you will be responsible for a gym revival. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. There is going to be a miracle that will take place in the school mm. through your hands. Amen. You're in school, right? Yeah, I'm in school that will take place mm -hmm. that will make people go what mm. and then they're going to come up to you and be like yo i got this problem i got that problem mm. can you touch me i don't know what you did da, 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 da. stay humble in those moments though yeah the lord is going to use you mightily for this that's fire yeah yeah it yeah. will be a media sensation ah oh, that's fire it will be caught and what the Lord does with you in this miracle thing in the high school will also spark into other people's hearts in other high schools. Mm. Amen. You will be responsible for high school revivals. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's fire. I graduate June 2025. Amen. Yeah. May 2025. You'll have a lot to talk about. Wow. Amen. Amen. I saw, I saw also the number 14, and I was like, why am I seeing the number 14? Mm. Were you in a relationship at the age of 14? How old are you now, 16? No, nah, I'm 16, yeah. 16? Yeah. So I saw May 14th, but I'm asking about 14 because I think 14 is significant here too. Was there something you started with God at 14? Did you really get on fire for him at 14? Did you start to get really stirred up for him around this age? Yeah, actually, I started like, because I've I seen your videos, and then I just, I, been, then I went crazy. At yeah. the age of 14? Uh, yeah, was, yeah, about so, yeah. Okay, the age of 14 is what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. and I saw that was the beginning. Yeah. I'm also seeing attached to May 2025. Pay attention, I don't know what day is May 14th, 2025. I don't know what that date is. But pay attention to even that date, all right? Yes, sir. There's something, I believe there's something significant to May 14th, 2025, concerning what I've already prophesied to you. It's a Saturday. Oh, it's a Wednesday. It doesn't matter what day it is. Just yes, sir. pay attention to that. I will. When that day comes, I want you to remember this day. I want you to write me. Tell me what happened. Okay. Bet. Amen. For sure. Amen. We're going to pray now. Now, you're probably 26, 7, maybe up to... 21. <laughs> ah, you got an old good look to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see how... You, in a good way. You yeah. see how you're with all these people? Yeah. You know how you dragged them all here? Yeah. <laughs> That's a pastor's heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's a father's heart. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 You're going to be that starting fire of the whole family, right? Amen. That's pretty cool, huh? Amen. That's fine. You know, when you ask to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, it changes everything. Are you guys in the crowd doing okay? Just fine? All right. It's time to receive. We're going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So you can get it right in your seat, and we'll do it again later if you need it. But repent of anything you know you need to repent of, okay? And then we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us. 
by the grace of Jesus Christ. And what will happen is some of you will have the goal is getting it going. It looks a little bit like this. Lord, forgive me of this. Da, 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 da. I thank you for your grace. Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you right now, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. And then the next thing you know, you just let it go. It doesn't have to sound like that. You just let it go. You lose dignity. You don't care. Does that make sense? So everybody in this place, say, Lord Jesus, forgive us for any sins known and unknown. We thank you we thank you that you are here that you are here that you see us that you see us and that you love us and that you love us i ask you right now i ask you right now lord jesus christ lord jesus christ to baptize me to baptize me with the holy spirit with the holy spirit and fire and fire ignite ignite my prayer language my prayer language now now in jesus name 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 in jesus name, in jesus name. now wait father you heard what they said answer according to their faith I ask you right now, fill them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet with the Holy Ghost and fire and ignite their prayer language. The Bible says, open your mouth and I will fill it. If you've never spoken tongues, you need to speak now. Open your mouth, young man. Mark, pray for him. Raise your voice to the Lord. Worship team, I'm going to need you. Come on, come on. Stand to your feet, people. Miracles, signs, wonders. I want to raise the spirit in the room again. Can we do, uh, I saw the Lord one more time. Can we raise, just really get him going? We're going to do one worship song and we're going to go into the breaking out of miracles, of healings, of whatever God wants to do, okay? Let's really give God worship. I hope it's okay, Pastor Darren. I really want to see these people get some miracles. Get some healings, deaf ears open, anything like that. Anybody dealing with hearing issues in this room? You need an ear to be popped open? Get ready.
Sometimes spirits can cause ear issues, or sometimes it can just be a healing thing. The Lord showed me ears are about to open. Watch. Watch. We command in the mighty name of Jesus Christ anything hindering people's hearing, any deaf spirit that has been trying to take from them, I command you to leave their ears now. Leave their ears now. Leave their ears now. Oops. I command those nerves to be healed and recreated right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to check your ears. Check your ears. Check your ears. And if something has happened, let the place know something has happened. Let it be known. If God has opened your ears, let it be known. Cover that ear. See if you can hear better. See if there's been a change. Has there been a change? If they've been healed, we'll, we'll pray more. What happened? What happened? We want to hear. You've been laughing since the beginning. <laughs> Yesterday, uh -huh. I had a, my ear felt closed and I had the pastor's mother pray for me in the ladies' room. Uh -huh. And when she prayed for uh, the tenant, I, I don't know, the stuff. Sure. And I felt better. Uh huh. But until you said ear open, I felt it go pop. Wow. And I'm hearing a fight. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anything else with ears? Where you, did something happen now? Are, you, if you're wanting prayer, we're gonna pray. I want, I want you want prayer? Because... Okay, we're gonna get him, he guys. Is... I'm looking for the miracles. We're gonna pray. Don't worry. I know that you are like the woman with the issue of the blood. We're gonna get there. <laughs> we're going to pray. Okay. I know some of you really want prayer personally, but we're receiving in the atmosphere right now. No. Oh, Uh -huh. And I've only had like 80% or 20% hearing in this ear. Right. And now I can hear you fine from this ear. You really can. I've been waiting for this miracle for years ah. and years and years. You can hear. I can hear. Wow. I can hear everything right now. Wow, 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 wow. Come on, Jesus. Is there any other ears? Ears? Not yet? Okay. You had something change? Not yet. Okay, guys. I just want to hear you. I'm not. Listen, we're doing an atmospheric Holy Ghost work thing. Okay. I'm going to. We're going to go to another segment where we're laying hands and stuff. And you, we, you get prayer. But I want to do some atmosphere stuff first. Is that okay? The Holy Spirit will move and touch people in, in where, right where you are. All right. See past the man for a second. See past me. And see Jesus. Jesus will just touch you. His hand will come upon you and heal you just from being in an atmosphere of faith. Amen? Who's dealing with growths in their body? Growths. Like, like lumps and stuff like that. You have one? Raise your hand like this if you have a growth in your body. Okay, raise it high so I can see your hands. Okay, okay. Meaning you could have a breast lump. You could have lumps in your other areas, you know. I want you, if you can, to put your hand on that area. Thyroid stuff. Okay. Okay. Put your hands where that is. Watch this. You know, by the spirit, I, I, I started to see some of you, it's, it's like a, almost like a worm. It's a demonic worm that is causing your skin to protrude. It's causing problems. That means it's a spirit that's causing this issue. I'm going to command that thing to loose you and come out of your body. And you're going to see that lump start to dissolve, okay? Start to disappear. I know some of you have been worried tremendously about that. Keep your hand right there. and Watch this. We worship you, Jesus. Give him all the attention. Jesus, you are the healer. You are the miracle worker. I've seen you do it time and time again. And Lord, there's people in this room that are having trouble believing. They're actually full of doubt and unbelief, even though that they've come to be healed. 
I need you to go past that, Lord, today. I ask you right now, precious, wonderful Holy Spirit, the one that I co-label with, the one that I love so much, and the one that loves me, I need you, Holy Spirit, by your mercy, to go touch these people now and deliver them and heal them from these growths. Now, get ready. Be healed. Be healed. I command every growth in this place come out of their body now. Dissolve now. Disappear now. I curse you at the root now. Any demonic thing attached to the infirmity, to the growth, I command you to come out of their body now. It's coming out. Watch. Come out of their body now. Come out of their body now. Out of their body now. Every demonic growth. Come out of their body now. And I shut that thought that's coming to somebody over here saying that this is silly, trying to make you feel like it's not going to happen. I shut that demonic voice off now. I command you be healed in Jesus' name. Don't let that demon speak to you in the atmosphere. In Jesus' name, be healed. I command that demonic worm that is causing the issues in the body come out of their body. Growth leave their body leave their body leave their body yes 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 Yo, yes you don't get the yes yes oh yeah you have to release her yes you do yes you do Hey, 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 shut up and come out. Let her go. Fire on her body. Ooh, ah. Ugh. <laughs> it's never pretty. It's all coming out, girl. Even that lump is dissolving all the way. All the way. In Jesus' name. And when you see blood coming out with the vomit, it's bloodline stuff. So whenever you deliver somebody and you see blood coming out with it, it's attached to the bloodline. It's a bloodline curse. Your bloodline's being restored in Jesus' name. The Lord is restoring your bloodline. Be healed. Be free. Be free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Is her, uh, her significant other here? Is she with anybody? You're her boyfriend? Oh, well, you got to get married before I tell you to do what I was about to tell you to do. No touchy, touchy. <laughs> get married. <laughs> Amen. Is there anybody else that feels like you have an infirmity that seems demonic? You know it's demonic. You feel like it's a dem Okay. You're going to be set free. Just hold on. Anybody else, you feel like the thing you're dealing with is a demonic problem? You do? You, you know that it, you need healing, but you like, it just feels like it's spiritual. Good, good, good. Don't worry. <laughs> We're going to let them things scream on out of you. It's going to be wonderful, okay? Now, they can come in many different ways. You know how they get in. You know what it happens if you know anything about demons. What I want you to do is where you feel the infirmity, you're going to use your authority in Christ because I hope you're all Christians. That's right. You're already ahead of the game. Put your hand where it's at. And I want you to speak to that sickness, okay? Speak to that sickness. Say, I command you, you demonic infirmity, you will lose the hold of my body. You will not make me sick or diseased any longer. 
as a child of God, as a child of God I, take my promise I take my promise of healing at the cross. Of healing at the cross. And I command, and I command by, God's grace, by God's grace the miracle, the miracle to manifest, to manifest now, now, now. Now. I call angels, I call angels to, rip this thing out of me. to rip this thing out of me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus now wait. In the mighty name of Jesus, every demonic thing, come out of them. See, people are already starting to manifest. Come out of the body. Come out of the body. Come on out of there. And don't tell them no either. Listen to their voice and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let them go. Let them go. Come out of their body. Come out of their body. Come out of their body. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of disease, every spirit of sickness, every spirit that's in women's wombs, that is in women's backs, in their ears, in their jaws, in their head. Listen to me now. In, in men's bodies, in, their, in any part of their body, in their sexual organs, I command you to come out of them now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, let their bodies go. Every spirit of infirmity, come out of their body. 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 Also, I cancel that Jezebelic, sick-causing spirit. Now every Jezebel spirit that's attacking the bloodline, come out of their body. Every witchcraft spirit, yes, causing sickness in their body, come out of their body. Oh, Jezebel, let them go. Yes, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, every sickness, every disease caused by these spirits, I command it to come out of their body now. Let that woman go now. Let that woman go now. Let her go now. Come out of her body. You came in as a breath, you leave as a breath. Come out of her body. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray Holy Ghost fire over everybody's body now. In the mighty name of Jesus, come out of there. Come out of her, you sick spirit. You sick spirit. You've made her rageful. You've made her mad. Your time in her is up. Come out of there. When I tell you to leave, on the count of three, you leave. One, two, three. All the way. It's over. It's over. Out. 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 Out in Jesus' name. Come. Mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, bring her, bring her. Yeah, where's it? Yeah, bring her. Come here. Were you manifesting? Huh? Yeah, I think um, I got hot. Where, you got hot? Heartburn. Yeah. Heartburn? You normally have heart, heartburn? No? Oh, you're getting delivered. It's good. You ready? Look at me. Uh, uh, uh. You can't have her. Your assignment against her is over. You will come out of her chest. You will no longer live inside of her. You will no longer sabotage her life. As an authority in Jesus Christ, today it is over. You will not end her life. You will not destroy her. You will not attack her mind with these unclean thoughts any longer. I command you by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, come up and out of her now. Come out of her body. Come out of her body. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh-huh. You know how this works. You've been given the command. Up and out. Up and out. Jesus says to cast out demons, to tread on serpents and scorpions. That means today, your time comes to an end. When I touch this girl's head, you come out of her body. Come out. Come out of there. Ah, you're a stubborn spirit, aren't you? Come out of her. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. I'm going to do something here in just a second. Give me a woman on her. Help her through some unforgiveness things, please. 
I'm going to lay hands really fast. Set him free, Lord. Set him free. Set him free. In Jesus' name. Everything he saw through his eyes come out. Teams, I want you to get ready. Be free. Come out of here. God. Holy Ghost fire. In Jesus' name. Be free. Be free. Come off of her. Be healed. Be free. In Jesus' name. Also, guys, you have to forgive. Check that lump. Check that lump. Check the lump. Come here. Come here. Check the lump. Check the lump. Is it there? The lump has gone. The lump has disappeared. And you go out of here shouting praise to Jesus. It's yours. Be free. Be free. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every seducing serpent that's tried to attack your life, I break its power now. Come off of her now. Yes. Yes. She's not yours. Everything that was done wrong to her, I sabotage it now. The things that happened to you in your past is being washed clean now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <sighs> Freedom is your portion. Hey. Hey. It's going. <sighs> Be free from that hindering spirit on your life. That witchcraft attack. It's been in you since you were young. I command it off of it now. Fight on nobody. Ah. Who are you? Huh? Speak. Speak. What are you doing to her? Huh? Oh, Lord, it's coming out. Get the bucket close, man. Oof. You witchcraft spirit in the bloodline. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Oof. Oof. Oh, that's how you know it's demons. Them things stink, man. Things never smell good. <laughs> Bless her, Lord. Bless her. Oh. Be blessed. Be blessed. Oh. It's a religious spirit that's been trying to attack the mind. Come out of her. It's, I break your power now. You can't have her. You can't have her generations. You can't have her family. Be free in Jesus' name. There will be no more fear. You will not return any attacks. Every spirit of fear that has came in through what she just went through, I command the rest of it. It is finished <laughs> all the way mm. can we believe for the healing of this young girl yeah. Sophia you want to live Sophia you want to live a great it will leave her you want your daughter to live say Jesus affect, affect her thank you Jesus for your grace you hurt anywhere right now can you feel any pain you want to live a long healthy life and you want to help other people you will live oh Lord Jesus heal this little one Lord it is your will you said bring the little ones to you and do not hinder them. Today we've brought this little one to you, Lord. It's okay. Don't be scared. More power. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Do me a favor. Now you tell me. How do you feel? Huh? Are you happy? You feel light? Hallelujah! The difference in her. Uh, this, oh, precious one. Listen, 
if you are obedient and you serve Jesus all the days of your life, he will not die. And you will proclaim of the goodness of God in your life. Amen. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be healed. Receive the grace of God. Receive. Grace, as the centurion came to Jesus, he's going to answer you. have a problem having kids as you can tell I have four and I, I feel like having an abortion then make the walk of faith hey listen your womb will be healed in everything you just receive mercy I command the spirit you release he healed sin you will see that baby in heaven raising every child that didn't get to it was like a high school thing what do you want from isn't it funny we're calling up or is this your first time coming forward like this and I command come out of this all the way out of them all the way to get prayer that's for you to design there's been a lot you're meant to make things beautiful you're not married encourage you with but actually every are you happy I'm gonna pray and today may, may you create a couple months is here. if Jesus heals you you'll be able I had yes by God's grace I want my this boy to stop you know of yesterday uh, this is and the attacks of yours are you doing deliverance is that okay yes we'll receive it and may the grace of God increase evermore Lord may she set the captives free and may every burden be lifted from her life in Jesus' name, amen. What are you here for? Freedom. From? Freedom. From? Um, good question. <laughs> you just want freedom? Yes. Who, who, who got? <laughs> All I did was said, who got? I mean... I thought I would get further than that. I'm going to be in a minute. Hey, who's down here? Huh? Who's down here? Stand to your feet. Come on, stand up. You're still here. What is that? Do you know what that is? Somebody die in your family? My father. Who? My father. It wasn't a good death, was it? No. No, I never knew him. You never knew him? Because I was going to ask you before you fell, <laughs> who died early <laughs> in your family? Because whatever you're suffering with is attached to that. Okay? You need to know the father, don't you? the Father, because there's been a spirit speaking to you that shouldn't be speaking to you. You've been fathered by the wrong one. Right? That's why right. you've been having trouble here. You want the spirit to leave? Yes. How, how bad? <laughs> bad. Really bad? Yes. where it's at. It's right there. Give me a second, okay? Come out of her now, you wicked, nasty spirit. Your time is up. Exit her body. All the way. All the way. 
all the way out of the uh uh-huh come on come on come on in the mighty name of jesus submit yourself to christ submit yourself to christ and come out of her body come out of her body in the mighty name of jesus your time is up you came in as a breath you leave as a breath i cancel your assignment fly on her body Your t- there it comes. All the way. Give a hand clap to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's victory. How are you? You have a boo boo? Yeah. You want to be healed yes. of the boo boo? Yes. It's a war. Oh, that's. Hey, let it all out, girl. Let it all go. This is your time. This is your victory. You have every right to be free. Today the Lord has visited you and had mercy on you. He is setting you free. Be healed. What do you need? Who is this? This is my daughter. Your daughter? I saw you both earlier when you were standing up here. Is my keys good? You good? Amen, amen. I'm just working. Don't worry. We won't... I got to catch a flight at like early, early. Who knows if I'll sleep? <laughs> Listen, I, I got time. <laughs> That's what pastor says, amen? Y'all like this stuff too much. <laughs> Listen, there's some things the Lord wants to do for you both. There's been a big, how would I say, a big, I'll keep it simple, witchcraft attack that's came up against you guys. It's been a big, big problem. I've also saw, I'm not saying now, okay, but I also saw the immorality that y'all have had to face throughout your life. Okay? It's almost like you felt second best a lot. You helped many. The down the shows me too. Okay. They marriage up to stop. As a young girl that you should not know. May the Lord heal you. May He heal your heart. May He remove the rejection. May He remove the fear. May He remove the pain. May He remove your tears. You know, I want to encourage you, okay? God hears your prayers. And it's part of the reason this is happening today. The Lord's going to help you, sisters. The Lord's going to help your dad. He's going to give you the family that you've always wanted. A big miracle is happening. Bigger than you know right now. The Lord says, I am making all things new. In Jesus' name. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. For healing me. For healing me. And my family. And my family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord is a restorer. He's a healer, right? He makes all things new. You have ear issues. You want some new ears? Yeah. In this ear. Yeah. Yes, deafness in the right ear and both of them. This one's. Do you believe you're going to be healed? Yes. Like right now. Yes. I need a big yes. A big yes. Stand her up, stand her up. Check. This is spiritual. You're having a hard time with yourself. Yeah. We're like 2,000 people pray for me. Okay. 
2,000 people prayed for you. So there's a bigger issue at play. Probably. Self-worth, self-value. Doubt, unbelief. Generation two. Maybe? That could be a lot of stuff. Okay. The reason I know is because I said, you're going to get healed. You're... Yes. Oh, okay. No. no doubting. Come to the Lord knowing that I... he is a rewarder of those who diligently I know. seek him. I know. He sealed me so many other things. Amen. Yes, I know. I yes. need you to close your eyes, raise your hands, and receive. <sighs> All of it go in Jesus' name. Be made whole. In Jesus' name. Mark, pray for her. Okay. We're going to um, do one more thing. I want to do two things, actually, before we end, because we're getting late. I want to do two things, two things. I want to pray a general prayer really quick for one more move of deliverance, and I want to pray for everybody to be filled to overflow with the Holy Ghost really fast. So let's say a corporate prayer, and then worship team can end. I'll give it over. I'm done. Amen. Anybody still feel like they need some deliverance from other things? Raise your hand. Okay, we're going to pray for that now. Say right now. Right now. Every contrary spirit. Every contrary spirit. To the Holy Spirit. To the Holy Spirit. I command you. I command you. To end. To end. In my life. In my life. Your time is up. Your time is up. I don't care what your name is. I don't care what your name is. Or how long you've been here. Or how long you've been there. You ain't sharing my house. You ain't sharing my house. My temple. My temple. With the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. So right now. So right now. Every contrary spirit. Every contrary spirit. Come up. Come up. And out. And out. Of this temple. Of this temple. Now. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now speak to it. Say come up and out. Come up and out. Speak to it. Tell it to go. That's right. Tell that thing to go. Tell that thing to go. Tell that thing to go. Now I'm going to come into agreement with you. Every demonic thing that's hindering these people, come up and out of their body now. Every unclean spirit, come up and out of their body now. Come up and out of their body now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every serpent, every unclean spirit, every witchcraft spirit, everything sabotaging people's lives i command you come up and out of their body now every generational curse be broken now because it was broken at the cross every bloodline curse be broken now in the mighty name of jesus every satanic spirit loose their life now in the mighty name of jesus christ every seducing spirit every spirit of arthritis every spirit of bitterness i command you to loose their bodies now in the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit spouse that has been married to these people, that is attacking marriages, I command you to be unmarried from their life now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, come up and out of their body. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Now, if you're standing here and you want a fresh feeling, you want to take deliverance, you want to take the supernatural anointing out on the four corners of the world. Ask the Holy Spirit this right now. Say, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We thank you right now. We thank you right now. For the grace. For the grace. To deliver, to deliver, to, deliver, to, heal, to heal, to perform miracles, to, perform miracles to, save the lost, to save the lost, and to fill people with the Holy Spirit. And to fill people with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. For this mantle, for this mantle coming upon me now. Coming upon me now. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. For filling me, for filling me with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit and fire. And fire. Now say more fire. More fire. More fire. 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 More, fire. More fire! More fire! More fire! Say, I receive! I receive! I receive! I receive. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name! Now hold your hands to the Lord. Hold them high. Hold them high. Keep them up. I'm going to pray. You ask for it, you get it. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these people. Right now, by your grace. And by their request, I hope you're ready. Touch!
Uh, the ones all the way in the back got it, huh? Put your eyes on Jesus. I saw a mighty rushing wind. Receive, 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 receive. Lord, let your fire fall. 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 Ah, tongues of fire. Let your fire fall. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. If you've never spoken tongues, it's the time to do it. Open your mouth and he will fill it. Just like on Pentecost. I see tongues of fire. I see tongues of fire like on Pentecost. I see tongues of fire like on Pentecost. I see tongues of fire like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. I see tongues of fire like on Pentecost. I hear. I hear tongues of fire like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. I see. T- I hear tongues of fire like on Pentecost. Like on Pentecost. I hear tongues of fire. Like on Pentecost, tongues of fire. I hear tongues of fire like on Pentecost. I hear tongues of fire like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire, I hear tongues of fire, like a Pentecost. Tongues of fire, tongues of fire. I hear tongues of fire, like on Pentecost. I hear tongues of fire, like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire, tongues of fire. I hear tongues of fire like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire. Like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire. Forerunners, lay hands on their head. Ministry team, lay hands on their head so they can receive the Holy Ghost. I hear tongues of fire like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire, tongues of fire. Tongues of fire like on Pentecost. Tongues of fire, tongues of fire.
see tongues of fire like in Pentecost. Tongues of fire, tongues of fire. I hear tongues of fire like in Pentecost. Tongues of fire, tongues of fire. Fire. I see tons of fire. 
Fields of fire like a Pentecost Tongues of fire, tongues of fire I hear tongues of fire like a Pentecost Tongues of fire, tongues of fire I hear tongues of fire like a Pentecost Tongues of fire, tongues of fire right here in this house see uh, deliverance and healing every Tuesday night so that's right here 7 p.m. the Lord has done a good work here if you need more ministry we invite you to come back you are loved you are blessed in this house we bless everyone watching online tonight we call you blessed of the Lord and highly favored please 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 Hallelujah, as you guys are